Hi everybody, it's Alan Williamson with At Home Crypto again. A lot of people have been asking me for details on configuring their Canon controller for the Avalon 741s and 7 series, or really 6 series really, because the controller interface is pretty much the same. So the first thing you were going to do is plug in the controller. I showed you this. It's a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. I showed you that in a previous uh, video. And the Pi or controller comes with a default setting of 192.168.0.100. And so you'll need to connect your RJ45 or LAN connection to your computer and directly to the uh, controller itself if you're going to make these changes. There. Or if you're already on the same network of 0, 192.168.0. Um, keep in mind again that it's dot one hundred is the controller. So for this case, we've directly connected from our uh, laptop to the controller. I'm clicking on the went into control panel, network and internet, network connection. You'll want to change your local area connection. Okay, and you can see it's already communicating. Our wireless is not on a network, so that's why you see the red X. The local area connection here. There is no red X. It means that it's communicating to something out there but I have this currently set to DHCP to receive an IP address. We need to manually set that, so if you saw, I right click and go to properties, and again, we got there from control panel, network and internet, network connections. There, and you wanna change your IP4 settings. Okay, under that, normally it would be set to obtain IP address automatically. Use the following IP address. Is what you want to choose. We'll plug in 192.168.0.101. Okay. The subnet mask you can leave with 255, 255, 255, 0. And then for the default gateway, make sure you set it to 192.168.0. 0, 1. I'm not going to explain all this in a, this video if you need to or want to learn more about the a TCP IP suite or the network mm -hmm. settings. Um, this, look at another video from somebody else. I'll try to focus on the, there, on the other details. There. Okay, and you can set your DNS there, mm -hmm. 114, 114, 114. There. Now we're going to hit OK. All right, so we have that set. It's communicating. Now is it there? And so we're going to try to connect directly to our controller now. Again, in our browser, we're going to choose 192.168.0.100. Hit Enter. There you go. There's your Avalon screen. It comes first with no login, so just click login. Please go in and change that. That's going to be one of the first things we do is change our password. Okay, just for this, um, I wrote in root, root, but you can type in anything as long as you know your password, okay? So I'm going to actually change it to something a little bit more informational for me that I'll remember. It's still rather easy, but always change your password. Password successfully changed. Okay, so we're gonna log out. I wanna test this to make sure it is exactly what I wanted, because I might end up having to do a video for you to how to fix <laughs> if you did lock yourself out. But luckily we did not, did we? Okay. Now let's go in. This is your main dashboard. As you see, there's your MAC address of your Pi or controller, the default IP. Okay, we don't have any settings for our current pool. That's because we haven't configured it yet. You quick, click Quick Setting, which took us to this menu, the configuration. In TP, that's up to you. If you want to change that, you can set it. If you have one internal or if you wanted to set the OpenWRT, you'll see that um, OpenWRT is kind of a open source solution that is connected to MIDI. There, so this is already configured for a Canon worker, of course. There, and it's pointed over to the Stratum Cano. 
personally, I use the, the Stratum slush pool there. And uh, look at your specific pool of what you would want to use there. there, And your port, your pool one worker. All of these settings, you'll have to log in to your like slush pool account or Kano pool. There's a lot of different kind of pools out there. It'll tell you specifically what your user or your worker name is. We're going to go with there dot slush pool there so it looks something like that and it's always user at or dot the pool is your pool worker 90 percent of the time you again you'll change this usually you can just copy and paste these settings your password won't matter because it all goes to this but you would still put yeah, one two three four is fine there make sure you delete the other ones there you can have backups that's why you have these different ones. If you, this pool, your pool goes down, it'll start mining to this pool. So don't leave these default ones. Um, you can put your own twice if you wanted there in these different settings. There. So for right now, we're just going to leave it as there and change them as comp customs because we really don't want, like I said, anything saved here for right now. I'm just showing you this one time, but. Add each one of your pools that you'd want to with fell over and priority. Use pool one as your priority one. There, so we'll hit save and apply. Okay, and from there, that's really all you'd need to do to change or to start mining. Um, of course, you would want to have your miners, uh, the 741s plugged into the controller via the USB to the AUC, but that is in the other video. This is all I wanted to focus on this initial um, pages here. If you wanted to move this onto your own network, uh, you hopefully would know what your network is in your environment. Just change it to one, or you could even make it a there, DHCP. So when you plug it in, it'll connect and take whatever IP address it wants uh, is available next from your router. But of course, then you would have to log into your router and see what IP address it gave this. The benefit of doing the static IP is that you can um, you know, you know exactly what it is. It saves you a little bit more efficiency. For right now, we're just going to leave it as DHCP there. Yeah? And for many people that have worked, because remember, let's give it a second. We had set our pools in the configuration. So once we take this and unplug from our local PC where we've done these initial configurations, now we could take our controller and plug it into the router and get an IP address there. And within five minutes or so from plugging that into your router, the controller into your router while it's plugged into the 741 or the Avalon systems because we had set the configuration earlier. Yeah, my laptop's a little so. But remember we had set the different pools there with the username. So it should immediately begin mining or at least communicating to your mining pool. For slush pool, it seems to take about five minutes to start catching up. But you'll tell from your 741s when they're mining because it'll get louder and hotter, of course. And it's not talking to any network right now or the miners, the 741s. And that's basically it. Yeah, it's not too tough. Post any questions you might have. If you wanted to see the advanced version, it's just very much like the OpenWRT. Uh, but in there is actually where you can even set your controller to uh, work or to you can enable the Wi-Fi on this. The Raspberry Pi, this model, the what is the model? Um, yeah, the Pi 3 Model B um, actually does support Wi-Fi um, by default. Okay. Yeah, so again, you would be able to go into the advanced version. I, I recommend doing a direct connection. It's been quicker for me and then easier to, uh, to administer if you need to. Uh, but really, if you didn't have access, you could absolutely still do the Wi-Fi. That's one of the best features in the advanced version uh, that I found. And there's not many other settings in there that you'd really want to play around with. So again, that's your video for today of how to configure your Canon Avalon 7 Series or 6 Series. Uh, via the interface of your controller and we focused on logging in changing our password configuring our pools and then changing the network settings thank you and please have a great day